This is uh, Peter Ryan, and we're back again with another Apollos class apologetics study. And uh, our subject today is Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses, I believe, are uh, zealous, they're sincere, uh, they're very moral people, but just like anybody else that's involved in a cult, uh, they're deceived, okay? Uh, we have to realize that Jehovah's Witnesses are not going to be won by anger, but with compassion. I believe we will be able to, to disarm them with kindness. Um, I, you know, if you study Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, you'll realize that they actually believe that Jesus is Michael the Archangel. Uh, they call him the perfect man. He was not God, he was Michael. Okay? They teach that uh, he wasn't actually Christ until he was baptized. Um, unlike historical Christianity, they teach that he did not, not, he did not die on a cross, but he died on a stake. Um, so, you know, when we, when we study this, this is an odd, odd cult, and I think one of our first questions is, how can they believe these things, right? Um, well, I mean, if you were to look into the organization itself, they don't use the, the typical Bible that most Christian churches use. Of course, I would advocate, you know, using the King James, uh, others would say New King James, okay, we, we understand there's different Bible versions, and we have preferences about which one we're going to use. But Jehovah's Witnesses actually use the New World Translation. Uh, if you ever study this thing, it's a gross, heretical translation of the Greek and Hebrew language. Uh, let me give you an example, okay? Uh, in John 1.1, 1, 1 on, in the New World Translation, this is how their book reads. In the beginning, the Word was, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, ready for this? A god a god so you all right off the bat they're attacking the deity of christ because they do not believe christ is god um if you study their history uh interestingly they they claim that the king james version of the bible is corrupt but what's really funny is they actually use the king james and they also i think use the asv until like 1950 so when they come to our doors, they're, they're very uh, confident in their New World Translation. And when we take out our Bibles, they look at it like it's corrupt. But they don't know their own history a lot of times, okay? Um, now also, not many Jehovah's Witnesses know this. And if you're speaking to Jehovah's Witnesses, I probably wouldn't recommend bringing this up on the first meeting. But the organization did not release the names of the five translators of the New World Translation, and they said it was to allow for humility. Um, however, when these names were leaked, it became embarrassing because, if you if you can imagine this, not one of them, out of the, the five translators, had any biblical, Hebrew, or Greek training. So, what's really interesting is they look at our Bible and they say, well, I can't believe you read the, the King James or, you know, some people use the New King James, whatever. And they say, I can't believe you read that because, you know, our Bible is, is, is so much better. And they don't even know that the people that translated their Bibles were inept, um, you know, in, in historical Koine Greek or, you know, ancient Hebrew. I mean, they're... They shouldn't even be touching a translation, and they are entrusting uh, their eternity on a heretical, gross uh, translation of the scriptures. So that's just a couple of things, like how can they believe these things? Well, it's their Bible. Um, now, there's a few things to keep in mind before you actually start this conversation. Now, I really want to stress this because they're in a cult, and we have to have compassion. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses are brainwashed, and the goal, the goal that we're going to set forth here is to ask them questions and make them think, because they're trained for comebacks, and honestly, they've probably heard your retort or your remark a thousand times. Um, if you've ever dealt with Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't like to be pinned down. They'll try to change the subject. If you bring up a really good point, maybe they haven't heard, they'll start talking about the kingdom again or paradise earth or, you know, how they don't believe in hell. I mean, they, they don't like to be pinned down. They want to be in control of the conversation. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Um, I would also encourage you uh, to remember 
that uh, you're not supposed to be rude, but I wouldn't let them take charge of the conversation and change the subject. Because if you study their doctrine, what they're really telling you is they're trying to get you to believe that to be saved, you have to be a part of their organization, um, and your existence is pretty much just going to be working, it's all going to be works, and there's not going to be assurance of salvation, um, your eternity is just going to be up to Jehovah. Um, I believe, you know, there a lot of them are good and kind people, and they're desiring to please God and be saved. So you really have to be merciful to people you show the truth. If if they believe the message that you bring, that Jesus Christ is actually God, and he, he died, he was buried, and he physically rose again from the grave, and you, call, you say that he is Christ, he is the same as the Father, and they believe that, they will lose their friends, they'll lose their family. So this is just a precursor because I believe that in our movement, if somebody doesn't totally 100% agree with us, we are not very cordial, we're not as kind as we should be, and we just end up turning people off by being angry and snarky, and I would just encourage you, before you work with these people, realize that they're deceived, realize that the devil has blinded them, and you are supposed to be salt, you are supposed to be light in this situation, okay? So let me just bring two quick strategies, then we're done, okay? The first one is, I'm going to title it, What Must I Do to Get into a Jehovah's Kingdom? Now, once again, remember, we're trying to get them to think. So, imagine... I'm at the door, there's two Jehovah's Witnesses, and this is what I say. All right, Mr. Jehovah's Witness, imagine I've got a knife in my neck. I'm bleeding out. I am going to pass away in five minutes. So here's the question. What must I do to get into the kingdom? Well, they may come back and say many things. Our logical reply, now catch this, because I won't make it into the kingdom hall. I'm going to die before I finish reading the Watchtower magazine, I'm not going to go, you know, more than a door. I'm not going to go to another door before I die. So I, I don't have time to enter, to do all these things, right, to work for the kingdom. So our logical reply would be, what did the thief do on the cross? What did the thief do on the cross? His hands were nailed. His feet were nailed. He couldn't give alms to the poor. He couldn't go door to door. He didn't, ha he didn't have a Watchtower magazine to read. What did the thief do? Now, okay, they've obviously changed the question. They don't like that. Okay, here's the second strategy to wrap up the conversation. Because once again, you want to put a crack in the foundation and make them think. Now, in any apologetics, we are supposed to make Christ forefront we are supposed to exalt Christ. We're supposed to, uh, you know, keep our doctrine pure. We are supposed to point men to the biblical Christ, who is God. So remember that. So we are going to show you how to use their Bible. Because remember what I told you. They believe that our Bible is a, you know, is a piece of trash. Honestly, uh, they think that ours is not as uh, accurate as their New World Translation. So when we pull out. Uh, our Bibles, it's like instantaneously they shut off. They don't want to hear what you have to say. So I'm going to show you something real cool that you can use their Bibles. And I would encourage you, Just I've done it in my Bible, just write a couple of these verses, just the references, okay? And you can logically show them through three verses how that Christ is God, even out of their gross heretical translation, the New World Translation, okay? So <clears throat> let's uh, write this verse down. Write in your Bible, Revelation 1.8, just the reference. Okay, because you can say, Mr. Jehovah's Witness, because uh, they love their Bible, they're confident in their Bible, they're not scared, they want to show you their scripture. So you say, okay, well, Mr. Jehovah's Witness, can you go ahead and turn to Revelation 1.8? Revelation 1.8. Now remember, this is, uh, this is a horrible Bible. We wouldn't use this Bible. It's a, it's a Bible used by a cult. But... There are some things that still have not been translated away that you can point men to Christ. So follow along with me, okay? So they pull out their Bible, the New World Translation, and here's what Revelation 1.8 in their Bible says. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says Jehovah God. 
the one who is and the one who was and who is coming, the Almighty. So our first question is, who is Alpha and Omega? In this verse, they would say Jehovah. Okay. So the next verse you're going to write down is Revelation 21, 6 and 7. Revelation 21, 6 and 7. Now, once again, New World Translation. Their Bible says, And he said to me, They have come to pass. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To anyone thirsting, I will give from the spring of the water of life free. Anyone, uh, anyone conquering will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. So our next logical question is, who is the beginning and the end in this verse? They're going to say Jehovah God, because that's what their Bible tells them, right? Final verse. Three, remember I told you, three references. Revelation, chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. Their New World Translation says, And I saw him, and I fell as dead at, I fell as dead at his feet. And he laid his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the living one. And I became dead. But look, I am living forever and ever, and I have the keys of death and the grave. So... Who's the, who's the person speaking here? The first and the last, right? Remember we talked about uh, in this verse uh, prior, uh, who's the beginning and the end. You know, this is obviously, right, Jehovah God in their Bible, the first and the last. Think about this with me. This is your final question. When did Jehovah die? If God, if Jehovah God is the first and the last, in Revelation 1, 17 and 18, he says, I, I'm the living one, and I became dead, but look, I am living forever and ever, and have the keys of death and of the grave. When did Jehovah die? You know what you've just done right there? You have literally proved out of their heresy Bible that Jehovah God is Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the one who died and who rose again. Something very simple, and you can use it to transition right into the gospel. You know, 1 Corinthians 15, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ. You can go into John, you can go into John 3, you can, uh, you can go into Romans 3, you can show them how it's not by works, Ephesians 2, uh, 8 and 9. I mean, you can transition to a whole bunch of things because you have put a crack in the foundation. Now, I'll be honest with you, a lot of these people are, are like I said, genuine, kind, good-hearted people, but they're so deceived, you may not see them get saved at your door. But your responsibility is to make sure that they hear a clear presentation of the gospel and make them think. All right. So hopefully that was just quick, easy. Hope that helps you. Uh, Lord bless you and hope you use it and hope the Lord brings a lot of fruit to your account. All right. Lord bless you. Amen.